let me welcome all of you to the eighth study of the book of Ezra, who was otherwise known as a spiritual reformer of Israel. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we hand over everything to you, the study, the speaking, the listening, the discussion, the application, and your territorial control and the effects thereafter. In the name of God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, welcome. This chapter has 22 verses of scripture, which I think was our homework and is the real emphasis for discussion. We are talking about the patient and faithful God, and this is the second time we're talking about it. Divine impulse or divine encouragement was the last one. And we now want to talk about divine vindication. And when we're talking about vindication is the act of showing somebody to be blameless. God now put on his own jackets and went headlong with the accuser and sorted out the problem. And by way of introduction, divine processes, they are peculiar. This, what, this is what is emphasizing the holiness of God. God is almighty in patience. He's also the personification of written scriptures. The word of was God. And scriptures come live when God acts. You see, when we always let him, he will reproduce scripture lives at our doorstep and in the beauty of holiness. In the book of Proverbs is written, when a man ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. The divine motivation, which we talked about last time, which the Jews positively keyed into, led to divine vindication. And this is what we are about just to talk within the ambit of half an hour. You know, based on routine discovery and official request to search the archives, Israel's vindication followed the following pattern. A decree was given, Ezra 6.1. Then Darius the king made a decree, and search was made in the house of in the house of the rose, where treasures were laid up in Babylon. They, are, they were quite an organized society. And the location was cited because he said a scroll was found, the capital in Ekbata, the capital which is in the province of Media. And it was a record. Let's see what the record talked about. That scroll gave more details about approvals and dimensions. In the first year of King Cyrus, the king issued a decree concerning the temple of God in Jerusalem, the decree was, let the temple be rebuilt. And it was to be in a place where sacrifices will be made and let the foundation be laid. Dimensions given it is to be 90 feet high and 90 feet wide. Wow. More revelation. It was to be with three rows of gray stones. In other words, it was to be a laminated wall and a row of new timber and let the expenses be given in the, out of the king's house. Pungents. The imperial directive was also to return the ornaments that was taken away from Jerusalem 70 years before then and let the gold and silver utensils of the house of God which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple in Jerusalem and brought to Babylon, let them be returned and brought to their places in the temple of Jerusalem and you put them in the house of God. Can you imagine 70 years kept intact? By decree, those who reported the Samaritan team was now ordered to keep away from interfering with construction workers. He said, now listen, the tonight governor of the land beyond the Euphrates 
Feta Bozenai, associates, and all officials of that land stay out of their way. Leave the governor and the leaders of the Jews alone so they can walk on the temple of God as they rebuild it. Wow, divine dedication. So not only would that be, in addition, they were compelled to underwrite the finishing with royal revenue, which earlier was to be protected from the enemies, by the enemies, you can see. Moreover, I issue a decree as to what you shall do for the elders of these Jews. For the building of his house of God, let the cost be paid at the king's expense from the taxes in the region beyond the river. These will be given immediately to these men so that they are not hindered. And whatever they need, wow, young bulls, rams, and lambs of burnt offerings of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the request of the priests upon check, who are in Jerusalem, let it be given to them day by day, that they may offer sacrifices of sweet aroma to the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and his sons. Divine vintage. You will see the galaxy of requirements, cows, oil, wine, wheat. These are the photographs. They were to supply, they were supplied every day as they required. And for one purpose, that they may offer pleasing sacrifices to the God of heaven. That's a purpose. So you now see a blend with First Timothy chapter two. It had been in those days, you don't just occupy political office and go for Thanksgiving and stretch your legs on the sofa. No, the Bible says, I exhort, therefore, the first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all those who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God and Savior. When you cross your head of state every day, <clears throat> you, are, you are likely to finish his tenure cursing every day. Even unbelievers say, pray for the life of the king and his sons. That's the secret. It doesn't matter what political party your enemy, you know, your opponent belongs to. Once you don't pray for those who are in governance, you are shooting yourself on the foot. And he said, pray for the life of the king and his sons. Even when they were to go to captivity, Jeremiah reminded them, also do good things for the city where he sent you as captives. <clears throat> That's God talking to the captives, going into captivity. Pray to the Lord for the city where you are living because if good things happen in the city, good things will happen to you also. We need to know that secret. Wherever you are, it doesn't matter the religion, the tribe, or the man on the saddle, or the man who is in charge. If you don't pray for him, you will not have peace to, to go the way of your own peaceful options. Can you not see the deterrence? The decree was with deterrence for the falters who should become homeless. That's a picture right in front of you. Also have made a decree that whoever shall alter this word, let a beam be pulled out from its house. You can see it down there, right down, and let him be lifted up, that is hang him in his own house, and fasten thereof, and let his house become a dunk hill for this. So it's not even just now that, you know, governors are demolishing houses used for kidnapping. Decrees have done something like this. The vindication showcased the converted emperor who was not on the side of Samaritan pagans in office. And he continued, and the God that had, he even made a cross, and the God that has caused his name to dwell there, destroy all kings and people, that you have put to their hand to alter and to destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, I made a victory. Let it be done 
with speech. That's the king in his palace. And he was now gesticulating, let it be done with diligence. You could see the scroll, they were written it, and they had to go in haste. This is the opposite of what was on ground for 18 years. On ground, both the law and the military <coughs> stopped the building. To replace it, this is what will now be the violent options of opposing forces, not that alone. When you see verse 13, it's something similar to what happened to Amman in Susa. Like Mordecai was commanded to be decorated by his enemy Amman, Samaritan governors had no choice but to assist as follows. It was a written instruction. Then chapter nine, the governor beyond the river, Shetabozenai, they were asking for the names of those who were building. They now mentioned them by name and their companions because Darius the king has sent did accordingly with all delegates. You went to report somebody, you said not one sponsor the cost for which you have reported he was doing. This was what was on stage for 18 years. That is military. Now this is what those who, those who brought the law and the military as amiable as people who are to be reporting, they were now to make things happen, provide a retinue, rams, provide what they will use for sacrifices, get the house going, and do it with all diligence what the Dario king had ordered. The God who vindicates. So now the summary of God's vindication is as below through prophetic interference of God after 10 years stoppage of work. And we're told, and the elders of the Jews built and prospered through the prophesying of Agai the prophet and the Karai the son of Edo. Those ones who now stand shoulder high of what God has been doing in the miraculous, not just giving them encouragement, but vindicating them afterwards. This out, is the outcome. The house was built. They finished <clears throat> their building by command of the God of Israel and by decree of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. It now became a national project. The original lava, the original pot for washing hands made of bronze, which Solomon made of 12 bulls, everything was going in the simplicity of what it looked like. The house was finished. In the third day of the month of Ada, in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. So what are we saying? And the people of Israel, the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the returned Israelites celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy they offered the dedication of this house of God, 100 cows, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and as a sin offering for all Israel, 12 he goats according to the number of the tribes of Israel. They were to sweat out of their earning, but now the government had to provide it. So it's no longer would be shameful to wear the priest robes. You can see, you can see the file out on the day of dedication. They set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God at Jerusalem as it is written in the book of Moses, the textbooks, the scripture, and they were to be so profiled after, after observing holiness. But the summary of God's vindication was the celebration. Verse 19 and 20, the children of the captivity kept the Passover. That thing or Passover is still very strong in Israel. They kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first of the month, for the priests and the Levites were purified together. All of them were pure and killed the Passover. What are we now saying? 
Israel as a nation resumed godly activities with symbol of their temple's identity. That's what the scriptures say in verse 21. God's vindication brings joy to the elect. He kept the feasts. What else do we say? In point number six, what are the secrets of obtaining God's vindication? Whatever number of secrets, the first thing is not to be worried or agitated. When you're worried, when you're anxious, you make mistakes, not even to be irritated. The Bible says Psalm 37, don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. Like spring flowers, still soon with that. There was a time where you dare not mention the name of the head of state, you just disappear. It has become a forgot story. So don't, don't go nervous because things are not going well. When you look upwards, the Bible says, trust in the Lord, from Isaiah verse three, and do good. Not only do you key into the theological of the life of faith, actualize it, do good in spite of evil around. So when the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always, it says trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and feed on the, his faithfulness, delight yourself also in the Lord. So you always say, don't worry, do not worry, rejoice always. Those are key scriptures in the Old and New Testament. Verse 4, chapter 7, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you desire of your heart. God reciprocates joyful ex expression of faith. I call it, I have water in my soul. When you are before him and rejoicing and thanking him, the first thing that happens to you is a coolness which you cannot, I call it, I have water in my soul. It's better experience than described. The next step, verse 3, Verses five and six in chapter seven. Commit your way unto the Lord. That's the area of praying. Trust also in Him. Those are the steps, and He will act. He will bring forth your vindication as a light, and your rights as a new day. So when we are talking about secrets of obtaining vindication in in, in the book of Isaiah chapter sixty-two verse one. He says, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silence. <clears throat> and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep still until, in other words, the prayer is continuous. The intercession is continuous until a righteousness shines like a bright light, until a salvation comes around like a blazing torch. You can see that crown, Esther's crown. You, you will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, Isaiah 62, 3. The nation shall see your vindication and all the kings of glory. I shall be called by a new name with the mouth of the Lord will give you. It's beautiful when Christians are profiled in the practical. And while you're doing this, don't, don't, don't ask for your enemy's death. Romans 12, 19. Do not take revenge, my dear friends. Leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, if vengeance is mine, is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, who are like them that dream, those are the things that glide into memory, that glide into poetry, that get profiled, in this, shall I say, the compounded sausage of testimonies. See what has happened in Susa, instrumental to King's safety. When, you, when, you, when, when we have a case study in, in the book of Ezra, Esther, the thing was known to Mordecai. A man has sealed their doom. Who told it to Esther the queen? And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. So when, when you are praying, what happened in verse 23 of the book of Esther, when the acquisition was made of the matter, it was found that there are that both hanged on the tree, 
So when they were praying, God tried to leak the secret of those who were going to ex execute the king. God would just pay, bring public attention to what will profitably bring you out of doom. This is the hour of the enemy. You can see Ammon in God's robe, drinking wine with the king. You see, by conspiracy being planned for extinction by Ammon, the couriers went in haste by order of the king. And the decree was issued in Caesar, the capital, and the king and Ammon sat down to drink. But the city of Susa was perplexed. Don't focus on this. This type of thing, there is brevity. Like Jesus Christ told me, this is the time of evil. Openly, Mordecai wailed and cried when the thing was published. And it will be as if your, your end has come. But not then, just at the other climax, the king could not sleep. He went into archives <clears throat> and saw what Ammon had done. So the God of Vindication at work then, the, the king just said to Ammon, Ammon, come, come, come. And he told him what would be done to those, the king's lies. Ammon described everything, hoping it was him. He now said, make it, take the ropes, take the horse, as you have said, and do so to Mordecai the Jew, who sits at the king's gate. Leave out nothing that you have made mention. I have a testimony in my life. There are times when what you never thought will come your way will be brought to your doorstep. You know, that's a signet ring. The king put off his ring, it became a law. So there's always a brief time when evil is being celebrated. And still, before I leave Esther, divine vindication came, Esther's way and the Jews. The did not use the name language. They were put in all languages to speed up the new decree, the new law. If a new law has been made because of you, that's the crown of Esther, the God who is there. In about six minutes, this will be the summary of what I've been saying. Not the common trend in the narrow way. We have to come to the narrow way. The common trend in the narrow way traffic. Number one, demonic accusation. The devil can accuse you even to your wife. He can accuse you to your son. You, you just bombard you with all the wrongs you have been doing. He can accuse you. If beginning is demonic accusation. He can even be followed by demonic vandalization. You can have brutalization. Everything will just be rough. But then there'll be divine motiv motivation. Who did that last time? God will show you the light in the tunnel, don't give up, followed by divine vindication. I'll say it again, divine accusation, sorry, demonic accusation, demonic vandalization, divine motivation, divine vindication. What are the factors? I put seven here. Factors affecting God's vindication. This is where I will stop. <clears throat> the first factor is prayer and fasting. Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Go, gather all the Jews who be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf, and neither eat or drink for three days, night or day. I am amazed with also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. You fast in your corner, you act in the open. How can you decrease divine vindication? What are the negatives? Concerning prayer and fasting with divine vision, you don't, you know, in, in Numbers 14 44, you don't, you, you don't do things by presumption. They presume to go to the heights of the hill country, although neither the ark of the covenant of the Lord nor Moses departed. Of course, they killed them. Don't just think, him by him by him. That's not the way to do God. You, you must be biblical. You don't do things. You don't go into serious warfare with imagination. Number two factor that affects vindication praises. Second Chronicles 20, 21. They even won the battle <clears throat> that way. They were praising God and God turned things around. Number three factor with positive 
vindication, courage to act on God's direction. We need courage. As I needed courage to fast and to go when it was even dangerous, you need courage. Number four, persistence in waiting upon the Lord. Jesus Christ said, when, I, when the man, Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Many of us, when we pray, we give up. You need to be persistent. And the negative past, you know, factor to persistence, Luke 14, 45. Sorry, Luke 12, 45. Jesus Christ said, when the servant says, my master is delayed in coming, Jesus Christ is coming, all of us have, we, like, they, have they even started joking about it. He now begins to beat his main servant and get drunk. That's when you got caught in your own webs. Number five factors affecting vindication, testimonies. Revelation 12, 11, the, the victorious Christians, they conquer the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimonies. For they love not their lives. So your testimony must key into God has said it. I believe it. That settles it. But in Luke 9, 26, you said, whoever he is ashamed of me and my words, or thing will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory or the Father and of the holy angels. The sixth, there must have been error of number the six is committal trust. Okay, six and seven, committal faith and trust. Psalm 20, verse seven and eight. Some boasts of chariots and some boast of horses. Those are connections. But we will boast in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, we shall stand. So when, when your hope is your connection, I pity you. Because the man you trust today can die overnight, and that's the end of your connection. The Bible says, sometimes seven verse five, commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. He will bring out forth your vindication as a light and your rights as a noon day. The negative part of trust is one Amaziah, who will not listen. You see, they will say, some people say, when, when the God wants to destroy somebody, he will just become deaf. They will take no, no, no advice or even wait on God. So as we, as I pause for now, I haven't spoken for 30 minutes concerning God of vindication. Our memory verse is Ezra chapter 6. It's, chapter, it's, chapter, it's the sixth, sixth verse of our book of study. Now, therefore, 39, governor of the province beyond the river. Shatabuzenai and your associates, the governors who are in the province beyond the river, keep away. Let the work of his house be, of God be let alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews rebuild the house of God. 